Well, this week's episode was smoother than creamed corn, because we watched Season 5, Episode 9, The Masseuse. Can I get a massage? <laughs> I massage who I want, when I want. I do not submit to forcible massage. So, Derek. So, Katie, to any uh, automated um, subtitle bots listening, our names are Katie and Derek. Yep, I'm Katie. This is Katie's voice. And I'm Derek. This is Derek's voice. Not Stacy and Bowen. Nope. Okay. We've got that out of the way. What did you think of this episode? What did you think of this episode? I I think I liked it. I think I liked it. Had your boy, Jennifer Coolidge. My boy? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So this episode was written by Peter Melman. It was directed by Tom Sharonis. It aired on November 18th, 1993. Vulture.com ranked it as the 13th best episode. Oh. Here we go. Uh, we agree. The Screen Crush had it uh, as more of a middle good uh, 48th. Okay. Still good. So what did they say? Vulture.com said something to the effect of like, it's perfect because like one of the themes throughout the series is Jerry's unsatisfied with his love life. Elaine is unsatisfied with his life life. And George, even though he should be satisfied with his love life, <laughs> is not. Okay. Yeah. I thought that all the storylines were strong. Yeah, maybe except for Kramer. Yeah, well, I think they've uh, rightfully delegated him a little bit. Mm. You're not a Kramer stan? No. Mm. Hey, who are the guest stars besides the incomparable Jennifer Coolidge? So we had the return of Lisa Edelstein reprising her role of Karen. Uh, I didn't write down what she was on because we talked about it when she was on the last uh, episode. She was in like House and a bunch of other stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge played the part of Jody, uh, famously known for American Pie, The White Lotus, Two Broke Girls, Shotgun Wedding. Uh, according to IMDb, this was her first role. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, what was she doing around that time? This is this is the this is inaugural it? inaugural Coolidge-a-thon. What movie was she a cop in? Night at the Roxbury. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was weird to see her younger. And like talking at a normal pace, like mm-hmm. a, like a regular person. <laughs> Do you remember when we, <laughs> the other week when we were watching Night at the Roxbury <laughs> and we were like, wait a second, that's Jennifer Coolidge talking normally. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, uh, weird. Yeah. It's off putting. Mm-hmm. She's delightful. Maybe one day she'll play a dolphin. I don't get it. You didn't see that clip where people asked her what she wanted to do and she was like, I want to play a dolphin. <laughs> was joel oh yeah joel was played by anthony sistaro he kind of like just like bounced around and did like an episode of this an episode of that he was uh got his first big break um on cheers as uh woody's like nemesis i was gonna say he looks kind of like woody hmm. his biggest role was probably on a tv show called witchblade which we all know and remember um and then famously well, maybe not famously. He was in the famous uh, final episode of Friends as a flight attendant or a gate uh, oh. attendant or something like that. I mean, I watched that show, but I don't remember the last episode. I think by then I was really sick of it. I watched it all at once. It yeah. was not a good binge watch. Mm. Don't come for her in the comments. Or do. Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. I really wrenched my neck. I tried brushing my teeth by holding my toothbrush still and (laughs) spinning my neck back and forth. So, how'd you do? I think I nailed it. I definitely remembered the Jerry talking about how he strained his neck by holding his (laughs) toothbrush and (laughs) shaking his head back and forth. Well, I don't don't think I could get that out when I actually said it on the podcast. (laughs) Uh, So I'll read the synopsis. Elaine dates a man who shares his name with a serial killer. I underscored Elaine because she gets top billing in the synopsis for a change. Mm. Uh, George becomes oddly drawn to Jerry's masseuse girlfriend, who refuses to massage Jerry. Yeah, that that happens. So the stand-up starts with talking about serial killers and their neighbors. Mm -hmm. 
how uh, you want to be one of the neighbors because then you'll survive to be interviewed on TV about yeah. your neighbor. <laughs> They're always interviewing the neighbors, talking about how nice of a guy he was, yeah. and he didn't uh, make very much noise. Never disturbed my murder, only stereos. Mm -hmm. He does make a little bit of a, like a throwaway line about how women love serial killers, mm -hmm. and they're like mailing them letters while they're in prison. Wasn't like over the past uh, summer, like last year, there was some Netflix uh, series about like, I don't know, Son of Sam or somebody that like all of the women were like thirsting after the actor that they had in like oh, the recreation. It was the Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah. One of those movies? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Jerry says he hasn't vomited in 13 years. Mm -hmm. June 29th, 1980. Time before that, June 29th, 1972. Wow. Is his birthday June 29th? Oh, I don't know. Let's quickly look it up. This does introduce yeah. a continuity error into the Seinfeld universe. Does it? Yeah, if you remember, uh, the episode, what was it called? It was when George and Elaine were like had to like hang out and they realized that they were more like friends-in-law than friends. Mm -hmm. And they were like, have you ever seen Jerry throw up? And they talked about how funny it was. Oh. But if you believe this uh, time, Jerry would not have known Elaine when he last threw up. Maybe he was having the dry heaves. That's what, that's, that, that's <laughs> how they, why they introduced dry heaves. <laughs> so it's not his birthday. His birthday is April 29th. Mm. Why wouldn't he just make it his birthday to be, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to throw up on his birthday. When's the last time you threw up? Hmm. Question. I think it was when my cousin was here and she and her husband brought pear flavored vodka. That's you, not me. You didn't throw up then? Oh, no. I desperately wanted to, but I didn't. You're not a puker. I'm not a puker. You might not have thrown up since uh, July 29th, uh, 1987. No, it was October 31st. October 31st. On 2009. <laughs> I remember it fondly. <laughs> It was when you were introduced to Jello shots. Introduced and said goodbye to. Mm -hmm. So Elaine's in her office and uh, her coworkers like barge in and they're like, "Hey, we just saw your boyfriend at the bus stop." Well, it's a mm -hmm. Weird thing to say. She's like, "Oh yeah, what's his name again?" Joel. Joel. What? Like this is very, mm. a very weird line of questioning. <laughs> they immediately start going in, making like, "Don't sleep with your back to him." Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how how long had it been? When did Joel Rifkin start killing people? When did he start or when did he well, stop? Well, like, when did he stop? So, like... So, like, is he, very is he close to when this episode came out. Same year. Is, 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 this, is, this a, is this a joking situation yet? You gotta, you gotta give it a little know. bit of time. I don't think so. Yeah. But she, she calls after them to try to defend him. Mm. He's good looking. He's a good shaver. And he hasn't thrown up in eight years. No. <laughs> He's a good shaver. I, that was that was the only part of that that I wrote down. <laughs> Is that important to uh, women? I think Elaine has gone out with bearded guys before. Okay, but maybe she could have said he's clean shaven, but like a good shaver. I don't. I don't think you would notice unless someone was really bad at it. Hmm. I don't know how you could be bad at it if you do it like every other day for your whole life. Maybe. So, if somebody with your name became a serial killer, would you change your name? That's a good question. Two questions. Uh-huh. Uh, is it in the city I live in, or is it, like, like if there's, like, a serial killer in Vancouver, hmm. I'm probably fine. Also, how many people, and how, like, <laughs> I mean, it's just four. Oh, my. Well, I would say that if your name is in the news, mm. if it comes up when you Google it, I think maybe, I think maybe you change it. I think you give it, you give it some time. And see see what happens. What comes up when you Google your name? Uh, like a lawyer in New Jersey and a dent. Well, also me, me actually, mm. um, because I have a professional person. I have a website, but the other people with my name are like it's so common: a dentist, a lawyer. Um, for a while, when you have I have, have I told the story on the the podcast before? You haven't said enough words for me to know yet. For a while, when you Googled Derek Shaw Toronto. Uh -huh. The first link to come up was a bio for a uh, male pornographic actor <laughs> named Derek Shaw from Toronto, <laughs> who was a host on The Naked News. <laughs> so when did you leave that job? I don't know. I feel like if I, if you met somebody with the last name Homolka, mm. you'd be like, ew, right? Even if it's 
not a woman, even if. So you got any cousins? Or... Yeah, yeah. Mm. So do you really want to answer questions like that? I mean, our last name is too common. Like, there's a million people with it, but mm. like, Rifkin is kind of in unique. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Why wouldn't he change his last name? And then he wouldn't mm. have to remember to like answer to a different name. Imagine it'd be harder to change your last name. I it's guess it's exactly the exact same. same. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, it, it's w- as, as a man, it's way too onerous to change your last name. You don't want it. Like there's, there's absolutely nothing that's worth. Even if a million serial killers had the same name as you, you don't want to go through all that hassle. No. Change your passport. Your change your fre- card. frequent flyer mile <laughs> accounts. I was once almost denied boarding on a flight because I changed my name on my passport and my frequent flyer card. But Air Canada got it wrong and put the wrong name on my card and they wouldn't accept me for the flight. (laughs) Did I tell you I was recently talking to a coworker and his wife had like the exact same thing? With Aeroplan? I think it – yeah, I think it was. Those jerks. And like same thing, like maiden name was supposed to be a second middle name. Mm -hmm. They put it as a – Hyphenate, last, yeah. like last name. And it's like in all of their correspondence, they don't say like first name, middle name, last name. They just say like last name. Well, they just say like dear first name, last name. Yeah. Or yeah, like yeah. Dear first middle last, right? Like, yeah. We don't know which field this template is yeah. populating. <laughs> what would you change your name to if you had to? OJ. <laughs> that was so funny. So Elaine is going through a football magazine, like casually talking about. Man, there are so many Dion's. What a cool name, Dion Rifkin. And he's mm. like, mm, no. She goes, oh, OJ. Change your name to OJ. Six months later. Man, yeah. Wow. Do you remember, like, where I was when the oh, Bronco I, chase happened? Yes. I don't remember where I was <laughs> when the Bronco chase happened. I remember that while I was in middle school at lunch. They, like, brought in a TV and let us watch the trial because it was, like, <laughs> that big. I remember when it was, like, announced, like, you were probably, people like, fifth grade cheering. Or people having, this is like, our moon landing. It was crazy. This is our JFK. I guess. Lee. No, that's 9-11. Another time the TV was wheeled into a classroom. You have to see this live right now. I slept in and missed class and went to, like, eat breakfast in my, like – college dorm mm. common room and was like so apparently george is back with karen the risotto Ris- broad Oto. they say it really weird risotto well, elaine refers to her as the risotto broad <laughs> have you ever been on a double date no but i think like group hangs. yeah our generation yeah. like it, it was it was not just like group hangs it was like couples would like hang out with a group of friends and yeah. do things right like I don't think that happened in the... I don't think you would set it up as like, we're going on a date. Would you like to also come on this date? Yeah. And it'll be a double date. Yeah. Yeah. It all seems very formal. Very formal. Also, then you have to decide if you're actually like dating that person or you're just hanging out. Mm. Does Jerry expect a massage at the restaurant? Maybe he's just laying groundwork so that if, when they leave, she'll be like, oh, I heard your neck was hurting. Let no, me, but uh... he's like putting his... Well, they, they've been on a bunch him. of dates, and she hasn't even uh, given him any massages. <laughs> so Jerry's a terrible person. Uh huh. It's it's clear now. This is, this is I'm I'm surprised that uh, Vulture.com and Screen Crush like ranked this as high as they did. With like this is this is basically the way that Jerry's acting is alluding to like sexual assault. Yeah. So it is. Somewhat making fun of sexual assault. Yes. (laughs) Surprised that they didn't, like, knock it down a few points because of that. Or at least mention it. Yeah. Be like, well, this is terribly uncomfortable, but it is still a funny episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll get there, but, like, the last stand-up, my jaw dropped at what he said. He doesn't want to get massaged by a stranger who's not going to sleep with him. Mm -hmm. It's like getting chocolate rubbed all all over your face and saying you missed a spot. Mm -hmm. You seem quite shocked by that. I still am. All right, where are we in this episode? OJ. OJ Rifkin. George touches Jody a lot at the restaurant. This, uh, this like, boisterous, friendly George is, like, <laughs> way too over the top. Well, it impresses his date. Should have stuck with Karen. Especially when she said that she hated him. Mm-hmm. 
when uh, George and Jerry are talking later, she told you she didn't like me? Yes. What were her exact words? I don't like it. (laughs) Later he goes, yes, everybody has to like me. I have to be liked. I feel like that sometimes. I think I care too much what people think of me. Mm. What do you think? Degaff. Hmm. I could use some more degaff. Hmm. Um, looser than cream corn. <laughs> so Joel has gotten uh, tickets to the New York Giants football game, uh, and they've given an extra ticket to Kramer. He left off a will call, mm-hmm. but he can't pick it up because he doesn't have his wallet. I wrote this down too. He says, uh, "Just look at me. Tell me I'm not Kramer." <laughs> See, he's used it sparingly. Mm. He's funny. Too much, and it overpowers the dish. And then they paged someone over the stadium PA system. For a will call ticket. Don't think that's happening. No. So that makes Joel realize that maybe he should change his name. And he and Elaine have come up with lists. They have. Do you want to go over the names? Okay, you be <laughs> you be, you be Joel. Stuart. No. I've never met a normal person named Stuart. <laughs> Todd. Vito. No reason. <laughs> no reason, Kevin. Alex. Mm, I have a problem with that name. There was a guy who sat beside me in art history. Every time he took a sip of coffee, he'd go, ah. <laughs> Ned? Ned sounds like someone who collects irregular underwear. Buys irregular Buys underwear. regular underwear. Mm. Ellis? Might as well be Alex. Remy? What should I go, go and wear a beret? Remy Rifkin. <laughs> Remy Rifkin. So, like, this is a a hard problem that people have to go through when they need to name someone. Usually you name a child. Yes. <laughs> uh, instead of a person. But you have, like, all these bad associations with, like, mm-hmm. people. I always thought that teachers would have the worst. Yep. Like, the most trouble naming their kids or naming whatever. Rebecca. Because they've had, like, every year you have 30 students yeah. and at least, like, 25 of them are going to be heads. So you probably have like a bad association with those names. Your sister hates the name Rebecca because Mm -hmm. of some Rebecca from 10, 15 years ago. Yep. She dislikes me so much. It's irresistible. I don't really have much after that. I have the closing stand up. Um, Did you check to see whether uh, Swedish people have a high suicide rate? They used to Hmm. in like the sixties. And Uh then, you know, successive governments brought in like, Social safety net and mental health support, and it's gotten better. Wow. So good for the Swedes. I know. Good, 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 good model for everybody. <laughs> the last stand up, Jerry says Swedish people like meat in their hands. Just leave that there. Don't we all? Do you want to see what Joel Rifkin looks like? Sure. He's maybe, maybe that is why she mentioned that he's not clean shaven or he's a good shaver because that oh yeah maybe maybe joel rifkin famously had that goatee uh whatever he has there really lopsided yeah not i mean his face is kind of lopsided he looks like rasputin he does look like rasputin in that picture not so much in that picture yeah but yeah that's when i was uh doing research at the end of the seinfeld episode i went Woo! yeah i, I figured <laughs> well that's all i have for the episode that is all i have for the episode can I'll- you explain your omission or your note or whatever that is you printed it off on the printer, and I put it on your keyboard. Yes. It's quite cryptic. <laughs> I think it makes perfect sense. Last episode, we were talking about whether bachelor auctions are real. hmm And this is a quote from a website. Little did I know that bachelor auctions aren't just made up tropes in romance novels. They are real. But from my perspective, you printed <laughs> off an entire piece of paper with a single sentence printed on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I usually write my corrections and stuff on my laptop and then print them so that I have them here where we record our mm-hmm. podcast. This time I only have the one. So oh. that's what I printed. You um, had something. I While listening to the episode, I always have my notes app open mm-hmm. in case I want to write anything down. Uh, I went back to look at what I had written down for the previous episode. I don't remember why I wrote one of them down. Okay, let's uh, figure it out together. Um, were we talking about Uber Eats or DoorDash or Maybe. anything? I don't know if you saw recently that there was this person and they were ordering like gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches from like a place on DoorDash and it was like Eddie's gourmet grilled cheese or something like that. Um, and they had like the address of the restaurant underneath mm-hmm. and they looked up the address and it was a Denny's. 
<laughs> so they were paying like $26 for a Denny's grilled cheese. Wow. And was it just some guy named Eddie who worked at Denny's? I don't know. So smart. <laughs> I guess like all these like crappy uh, restaurants can like rebrand themselves as like yeah. awesome new hipster joints on the delivery apps. Just take some, you know, n- some photos with natural light mm. uh, on a big plate. Mm-hmm. Make it look fancy. Um, we were talking about how you get around the content moderation layer on chat GPT. Mm-hmm. And I said it was Dan and I said it was an anagram. It's not a, I meant to say acronym, but it's also not an acronym. <laughs> okay. It's an initialism. Okay. And it stands for do anything now. Oh, I thought it was like GAN, which is like the thing that, you, you know, that this person doesn't exist, that website. It's mm. like a generative adversarial network. Okay. It's like a mathematical way of randomizing stuff, I think. Mm. No, this is just a series of prompts that you put into ChatGPT to get it to do anything do now. Do anything. Okay. Um, also, small correction. Um, uh, I got a message from loyal listener Tom. He wanted to mention that he does not discriminate against barbers. He'll take any from any Mediterranean nation, <laughs> uh, be they, uh, I don't know, Greek or Albanian. <laughs> All right. The next episode is the Cigar Store India. Oh, God. I think I've been dreading this episode. I think this episode, in my mind, when people are like looking back at Seinfeld as problematic, I think of this episode. I don't think of the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Okay. Should we skip it? Well, no, we could watch it. Okay. I mean, it's it's on Netflix, so yeah. like it's not like they removed it. I wonder if they removed it from syndication or not. Well, we'll have Oof. to do some research. Okay, well, do you want to venture to tell me what it's about, or...? Jerry buys an Elaine, a cigar store Indian. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens next time on Close Talkers. Bye. Bye.